I strongly believe that um, international learning or internationalization uh, should be organized in an inclusive way uh, in your classroom. Um, in order to do that, uh, it's important to be aware of your own cross-cultural framework, but as well with your students and offer some moments of reflection into that. Um, so they will be more aware, or you, at least you can raise some awareness um, to promote international learning. I think the biggest challenge we face in online learning is to promote, um, promote uh, actually an active uh, participant. So it means active learning where uh, there are chances for everyone to speak up, to participate and to promote learning. Uh, in a face-to-face -face class, it, it feels actually easier to do that. In an online class, some uh, practical issues like a non-working camera or bad internet connection can already be an issue to, um, yeah, to, um, to have lesser um, student interaction or at least uh, less student-centered education. I think it's, it's uh, worth mentioning that there are very, a lot of uh, obstacles uh, for the online uh, contacts uh, in internationalization, uh, like time frames and like uh, unexcess technical things and so on and so on. Uh, but at the same time, also some possibilities because it's uh, never been so easy to uh, include some international elements, at least elements or very fundamental uh, issues, examples, uh, participating people uh, from all over the world. And it is a wonderful uh, opportunity, but it has to be done good. It has to be prepared good. and 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 then there uh, can be miracles uh, by, by online ways of teaching and learning. Our ex experiences uh, in uh, collaborative online international learning with students is that um, through organizing group work uh, and have students involved with international students uh, from teacher training who are residents in another country and part of another nation, culture, and so on. Um, it's a way actually to enhance these important soft skills uh, like cross-cultural competencies. And um, by doing that, we also experience that students uh, are more aware about um, what is culture, uh, what is identity, and um, they are more having like an open attitude towards others, which is, um, which is very important uh, when you talk about stereotypes or uh, other uh, cultural um, issues. Thank you. I think, I think everybody is an expert in his or her domain, uh, uh, but when we all as experts, as a student, as a lecturer, as an educator, are doing our thing in our own world, separated from each other, we, we don't learn. We, 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 we only see our own truth. And so these online opportunities are very big, are really uh, a way to uh, include other views, other perceptions, other ways of thinking, talking, and so on. And yeah, uh, it's possible that you have your in your physical environment uh, a lot of different international people, for example, from different countries. But it's also possible that it's only uh, a small uh, group of the same people, let's say, white European 22 year old uh, students, for example. And then it's also our, uh, our duty to, to, to open this world and that's possible. And it's good to do that. Mm -hmm. So what do they miss? Well, they miss the world and we are living in the world. 
I think uh, uh, another benefit is also uh, when you have the opportunity to invite as well South partners or uh, partners uh, from countries um, like to, to world countries, but we call them, we prefer to call them South partners um, in international projects. Um, it's an opportunity actually to be more aware of the Eurocentrism perspective and uh, to exchange good practices and to um, open up uh, this view that Stain earlier mentioned. 